have your penis and suck dangerous. in, yeah. Yeah, very, very, very dangerous. <laughs> 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 you just get sucked in because your dick is flying around. <laughs> Welcome back to Podcast the oh Hero. Oh, God. Yeah, I, it is what it is at this point. Known. I should have known that was going to... Yeah. Well, that is... We're talking about getting your dink caught in a garburator from a distance. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It just that, seemed like a really good place to start. That's when you... That's what, you know, you, your dink is like a really long piece of spaghetti. Yeah. It's long, just a, it's just thin, a really and long, el dente. It's it's basically like one really long hair. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's a nice way of describing. Yeah, a long soft. There's dink. gonna be a lot of talk about penis in this episode. I just gonna say that right up front. Is that true? Yes. I went over this song a bunch today, and never once. <laughs> Did I think about <laughs> cocks? Oh, it's all it's all over this episode. I, I should say that I thought about cocks a lot outside of um, working on this song. But. So you were like thinking about them, then you're like, oh, I should think about this song, and you immediately stopped. Yep. You thought about the song, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you stopped thinking about the song and immediately went back to, to ding-dongs. Yeah, that's where I live. That's where okay. I live in my mind. Yeah. I should also say for the listeners uh, or the viewers... I don't have a really big head. I'm just a little cold, <laughs> and uh, I've got to have my hood on over my be, earphones. It would be great if you really did have, like, a really big back of your head. I did just, like, people were like, holy shit, I've listened to 20-something episodes of this, never realized how big his head was. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I likely, in my old age, mm-hmm. will... Um, my head will get bigger. I have a huge head anyway. Yeah. Right? But like your body's, this, you're, you're big all over. Yeah. Like you're tall, my, you're strong. My family, like as the men in my family get older, their heads turn more spherical. Yeah. And like when my dad was old, mm-hmm. he couldn't buy hats. Because he was just playing in, he, he was playing in DK mode. Oh, he, yeah. His, his head, his hat size was like eight and a half. Wow. I'm almost an eight. I'm I'll be screwed. honest with you. As far as hat size goes, numbers don't mean really anything to me. Hmm. Um, when you go on the little like things that you squeeze together on the snapback, mm-hmm. what what number would you be on? Uh, I'm on like, I think one, two, like three. You got three of them snapped three together? Four. Four maybe. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. I don't have a big head. I don't have a little head. I have... uh, Here. Today we're here to talk about the song from Pacific Myth. (laughs) We're here to talk about cold water. Yeah? That one's... This hat's two. Oh, my fuck. Two. You got a fucking big old melon. This one's two. You got a fritzy melon the size of a fucking... It's it's gigantic. And it's only going to get bigger as I get older, which... I really hate. That's not true. It is. It gets bigger? Yeah. It happened to my dad. It's going to happen to me. I know that a man's nose and ears don't stop growing until they die. I hear they keep growing even after you die. For a little, yeah. yeah. But eventually they stop and fall off. Uh, but that's, yeah. That's neither here nor there. Hide nor tail. Uh, We're talking about uh, cold water, right? Cold water. Did you say that already? I don't know. This episode is b- brought to you by uh, a glass of ice water. Ooh. I didn't even realize how uh, relevant that was. This yeah. is the Old Flame Brewing Company where this glass is from. Yep. They, their f- Old Flame Brewing Company is famous for their ice water. Here's a funny thing. It says, worth remembering. I do not know when I got this glass because <laughs> I do not remember ever visiting Old Flame Brewery. Oh. I think it's in Port Perry. All right, so let's That's let's talk icy fresh. specifics first, and then we'll generalize. Okay. So, can you do me a favor mm-hmm. and explain the particular lyrical cliche or cliches you are addressing with this particular song? So, all of the uh, 
songs fit within the hero's journey, which is a yeah. theory by Joseph Campbell. Um, and some of the songs, I believe this is the third song. So it starts with like the, the ordinary world, the call to adventure, the meeting of fucking like uh, guardians and shit like that. And where we find ourselves now is like challenges, temptations, death, and rebirth. Like I know that's like stupid and serious and like whatever, but in this song, the hero of Pacific Myth has left the ordinary world encountered some helpers and some guides and in this very moment experiences challenges and temptations so big that um there is a death of sorts Mm -hmm. it's like a death of the old self to be reborn into the hero and transformed into the hero that they are to become how the fuck did I how do we talk about that without just being like stupid <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not stupid because it is every story every right. story fucking does that um, and actually it's worth mentioning uh, the Barbie movie and I don't know when we're going to release this because we're sort of banking this one yeah. uh, but the Barbie movie is out in theaters right now and it has created some interesting dialogue into the hero's myth. And someone has created what's known as the heroine's myth um, or the heroine's adventure. And it's it's different than the hero's adventure. It is. Um, and there is actually, there's a fucking Joseph Campbell quote himself, the author of the hero's journey, um, regarding how the heroine's myth is different and how they don't necessarily have to experience a transformation because they already have all of the tools that they need. Um, That's brilliant. So it, I don't know enough about it. I've looked at the flow chart of it a couple times. It's, it's really interesting, but um, it's also super interesting that the fucking Barbie movie has created this discourse. Um, and I don't mean to be like the fucking Barbie movie, but the Barbie movie should be stupid. And apparently it isn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think, and I think that's the biggest thing with the Barbie movie is that it's like legit. It's, it's, it's pretty brilliant in that it's like taking something sort of trivial, like Barbie, something that's supposed mm-hmm. to be silly and, empty and whatever it's a it's a fucking toy right you know and, culturally and, significant toy historical whatever it's a toy yeah and using it for uh much more serious things yeah and i think that's awesome i do too i i i really want to see it me too um i feel very like left out of society at the moment um, for not having seen it already. Right. Uh, like I've missed a cultural experience that a lot of people, like everybody has had. I don't care about Oppenheimer. Uh, I do. At all. I 100% I mean, do. I, I I love that you do. And I think that they're both kind of similar, that it's like this. they're having this like cultural yeah. moment in time, but... I don't feel nearly as <laughs> fucked about not seeing yeah, Oppenheimer well, as I do about seeing Barbie. Yeah, 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 for sure. I think that's I think that's true. Yeah. I think of the two films, the one that's having the bigger cultural moment is Barbie by far. Oh yeah, it, it's got a it's got a more broad base. Yeah, in, in that its base is all made of broads. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but what I meant was like it's more applicable to more people. Like, how many people want to sit through like uh, the story of Oppenheimer and like the sadness and horror that it undoubtedly is? Right. Uh, I'm fucking not gonna do it. So I don't think that it even applies to just like men or women. And I think more people would be. Uh, I don't fucking know. I don't. Care. I think also probably 
if we looked at both films, both of us having seen neither of them. That's correct. I think likely the Barbie movie has more important things to say Mm. uh, about today and the world we're living in than the Oppenheimer movie does. That's just my guess. Yeah. I mean, that's, again, like all these statements are fucking hilarious because it's a toy. Yep. Um, I love all of it. I tried to watch Ben Shapiro's 45 minute uh, dissection of the (laughs) Barbie movie as feminist tripe. Uh, I couldn't sit through it. That man is just pure. He might have the most punchable face on the planet. Yeah. And he thinks Um, because he says things very quickly that he thinks he can't be challenged in any of his bullshit intellectual nonsense. Uh, But. And insofar as these stories both apply to the hero's journey yeah, and the hero's myth, uh, they also have nothing to do with cold water. <laughs> or, I mean, we couldn't describe the part of the hero's journey that is being experienced in cold water, that is being told about in cold sure. water in either of these movies, because we haven't fucking seen the movies. Yeah. Um, can I talk about how... Uh, incredibly uncomfortable the visuals that the lyrics create in my head are. Sure, I'd love to hear that. So, uh, drowning... The worst. Scariest. ...has to be uh, the most painful and terrifying way to die. Maybe of like the... God, is it weird of the ways to say you've like imagined? the standard ways to die? <laughs> drowning is one of the standard sort of... Yeah, you gotta think it's up there. You know what I mean? Like, I could imagine, like, being slowly devoured by weird worms would be terrifying. Yeah, and yeah. You know, but that's not likely to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. I think many people can relate to the th- idea of when you, like, you're watching a movie or something and you see somebody drowning, like, you start to feel like you can't <gasps> breathe. Yeah. Right? It's a visceral thing. And the body actually has a specific reaction um, that is triggered when you're drowning um, because it wants you to breathe because of the the buildup of carbon dioxide um, the body wants you to do this thing and it's the reason why like other like suffocating with other types of gases Mm -hmm. don't trigger the same uh, reaction. Um, right? What is like, the reaction? It's like a the the breathe in reaction, mm. right? It's that that when you finally have to breathe, then you pull all the water down into your lungs, right? That's the 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 body is forcing you to do that. You can't resist it any longer because there's a physical trigger that does that. But mm. like carbon monoxide poisoning where people just don't wake up from carbon monoxide, yeah. it's because the body doesn't react to carbon monoxide the same way it reacts to carbon dioxide buildup in the blood. Mm. And so like that's why you just stay asleep. You don't have that physical reaction to like breathe. Mm. That's interesting because um, I forget what it is, but I read this like uh, book about Rasputin a long time ago, and when they found him, he didn't have water in his lungs, which would su- oh no, ah, fuck, I forget what it is. It, it, he had water in his lungs, and it suggested that he drowned, mm. uh, despite the fact that he was like poisoned and shot and stabbed and beaten. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and the like conclusion was that he ultimately drowned after all of that all of which that is stuff fucked. it took a drowning to get him yeah but it, it his death and his life are deeply steeped in myth yeah so the other part of it is that not only do you go through the drowning piece right and the sort of in my head the visual i see of the slowly being pulled down and in from Mm -hmm. lighter to darker or whatever. But then I also have the visual, uh, of the body sort of at the bottom, just sort of waving a little bit in the water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that. Um, and then being eaten by animals. Yeah. Being picked apart. That's real gross. Yeah. So what's wrong with you? 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> the first like really bad anxiety attack I ever had. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast, so perfectly relevant, mm-hmm. about the only flight that the, is ever truly missing. I forget like the number of it, but it was like they assumed that it was hijacked and it went out over the ocean somewhere and they ran out of fuel. Uh, they genuinely don't know what happened to this flight. I think it's like the Malaysian Air. Yeah, so. MH360. No, wow. Wow. <laughs> I think it's 360. MH3 something. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But so I was listening to a podcast about that, and they started talking about uh, the people sitting at the bottom of the ocean, probably fairly perfectly preserved, still sitting in their seats with their seatbelts done up and uh, just like forever entombed uh, Mm -hmm. at the bottom of the ocean, never to be found again. And it just like, I fucking came flying out of bed and like sat up and like couldn't catch my breath um and a lot of the imagery that is uh used in this song it comes from that experience wow <laughs> so it's like a very real like uh <laughs> <laughs> this very <real laughs> fucking fear that I had that turned into this fucking song, sort of. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, when that happened, mm-hmm. uh, I remember being like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna totally find this thing using like Google Earth and like find it on satellite photos." And I spent a lot of time. Wow. Like just looking at places where they thought it went and. Finally, I was like, yeah, this thing is, they're never going to find it. No. Yeah. It's, I mean, if it's found, it's by dumb luck at this point. Right. It's just like, yeah, the oceans are too fucking vast and too fucking deep, which is kind of the point of Pacific myth in its entirety. You know what I mean? Like it's the vastness of the unexplored, um, you know, the, the, Pacific is the biggest and it's like supposed to represent uh, the collective unconscious and it is you know massive but there's a path through it that is always followed we always follow the same fucking path um, and it leaves a lot of things unexplored yeah 100% kind of the point of Pacific myth I, I feel like I'm being too fucking serious no you're not it's great. This is good stuff, man. <laughs> Thanks, Fritzy. <laughs> but every time I catch myself being like, oh, the fucking path of the righteous is rewarded. Uh, <laughs> uh, just Don't worry. Out. Don't worry, because it's going to go way sideways later. Hell yeah. It's going to go. It's get. It's going to get weird. Uh, okay. Um, I want to talk about the art. Sure. So the piece of art that came with this song is called Feeding Time by Jeff Jordan. Of course. Uh, it's the, the big frog. Yeah. If you're a fan of, of this and have seen the art that goes along with this song, is a big frog. Oh, I got a big... One okay, see ya. See ya. <laughs> he just left. He just went, see you, and peaced out. What has he got? What do you got? Okay. <gasps> yeah. So these, these are posters that feature that frog. Yeah. Jeff Jordan's frog, and it's from our Hong Kong show in 2016. Why is it all rolled up and not, like, nicely framed and... I don't know. I only have three of them left. Well, next time I'm out there, I'm stealing one. You can absolutely have one. These are, they just kind of sit around my house, and then every now and again, when like, like 
had I had some fella working on something in my house, and he was like, "Oh, frig, you're that guy from old PGH." I said, "Yeah, you want a poster?" <laughs> <laughs> so every time, for whatever reason, someone recognizes me, I give them a weird little thing like that. But I got hold on nice to of one. You. Aren't uh, I nice? <laughs> yeah, you are. You're just the nicest. Um. Uh. So, did this? piece exist before yes and it was like oh yes i like this it fits can we use it please yeah um i'm trying to think there are some pieces that he originally created yeah like the one shark for ragged tooth i don't believe it's him um and then we used him for Everything else, I believe, but he, there are two original pieces that he created for Pacific Myth. Yeah. Um, one is for Caravan, oh, yeah. with like which is like has like a pretty fucking yeah uh, literal description of what's happening almost, you know, mm-hmm. um, in the song. And uh, the other is there's like a shipwreck at the bottom of the sea, and there's like some fucking shark or something i can't remember what song it is maybe harbinger i don't okay. know i can't remember i could get um, the box set but i won't uh i read somewhere that the town is uh, an actual town in italy yeah yeah um in your head when you look at that picture mm-hmm. is the danger that the frog is going to eat the entire town like just go hump and just like take chomps out of buildings and everything or is the danger that the frog is sitting just outside of town and as the townspeople are going about their day his little tongue comes out and goes and and just grabs a person and chomps down on them i don't know man you have to pick i think that uh, i think it's more likely that it, the frog would eat people cuz they're like omnivores right yeah but Usually omnivores don't just consume like brick and shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm too serious tonight, Fritzy. I can't I, shake the serious stuff. Because when I first looked at it, I was like, "Oh yeah, that frog just gonna just start chomping on the town like a big monster." But mm. then I thought about it more, and I was like, "No, I think he's gonna slurp up some some peoples. He's gonna slurp some peeps, man." Yeah. Okay. Um, I really like the low growls. Uh, yeah they're real good thank you so much did you do anything with those is what that just straight up you that's just me that's me the, doing a low growl that was there was no like uh fiddling with the little slider and like oh no they're down. not they're not pitching them down or anything like you that you really got that low i guess so sometimes i can low. get sometimes i can get it pretty low um I don't know, especially because it's just the like, it's just two words, right? Cold water. Uh, like yeah. I just, you can project the fucking shit out of it because you don't have to do it like super long, yeah. like any of the like big long passages that I, big long passes that I would do with that stuff. Like I, I don't do very well because it's it takes a lot of fucking air for me. Yeah. Like I'm blowing lots of fucking air through. Um, I don't know. I I feel like other people's lows sound different than mine. But it could just be like a weird uh, version of like when you hear your voice back, it sounds different than you <laughs> does in your head. Like it you took know? me a little while to be like, is that really Rody's voice doing that? Just because you're, you yeah. do this real good. <laughs> yeah, you know I don't I mean? do this. Yeah, I, I hear you. You go yeah, up I, real good. <laughs> I don't go down too well. You go up real good, but yeah. I never really like that was the first time I was like, "Well, fuck, that's real low." Yeah, I can't really think of it like fuck, I don't know. Whenever I do that low sort of growl scream, it's just is what it is, right? Like mm-hmm. whatever comes out comes out. Um and if it suits it, it suits it. Like I remember we went on tour when this song was pre-produced like we we went out somewhere i forget and like cam was with us and i'd sent him the pre-production for it and when i first sent him it 
like he I don't think he said it. He just told me about it in an airport over beers. He was like that chorus is the fucking weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. Maybe he didn't exaggerate that much, but he was just like, I hated the cold. He was like, the fucking harmony you put on it is like weird and uncomfortable. The like notes you picked are weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> and then he was like, but like more I sat with it, the more I was like, this is fucking pretty sick, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I felt the same about it as well. Like when I first did, like it, I, it happened a lot quicker to me. And when I first like laid down the cold, she's like, "That's uh, not right." <laughs> and then sort of listened back a couple of times, and I'm like, "But it is kind of right." Yeah. And then after a week or two, it was just like, "No, I can't do anything but that. It's fucking weird, but I love it." Yeah. It it is. This is my. This is whenever you know everybody asks. This is my favorite song on the on the EP. Oh, wow. um, and it's uh, because of that, hmm. right? Because of the it it doesn't it doesn't feel like what I would expect it to do. Yeah, right. It subverts yeah. my expectations a little bit, um, but also like the sort of main thematic guitar riff in it. Um, mm -hmm. This is sort of the the one guitar riff that sort of repeats throughout a little bit i can't yeah, even fucking yeah. sing it i don't even know what it is um and it i know what the, you're talking about but you know and it end the riff it like plays three times and it's it ends slightly differently each time like there's a different bend and a different whatever it um uh the f first bend that luke does mm -hmm. um that's my favorite one of the three little endings that he puts on that phrase, those phrases. Um, you would so say you it was a grand him, bend. Can you tell him that specifically, I said specifically that the first little bend on cold water is the good one. It's the best one. And that the other ones, I hate them all. And okay. from now on, um, just do that first little bend, mm. but for everything. Every song, PTH song from now on is just that first little bend forever, over and over and over. Well, if we're ever to play it live, it won't even be Luke. It'll be Little Ben well, I, doing the no, Little I Bend. No, I don't even mean in this song. I mean every song. Little Ben does the Little Bend. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Do you Have you played it live? No. Well, In fact, we haven't played most of the EP live. We've played uh, Tidal. Mm-hmm. And I think we played, what's that called? Uh, Ragged. Rib, ragged rib, ribbed Tooth. Rib, ribbed for uh, her pleasure. Yeah. And we've played, so now that I'm mentioning this, it is at least half. Uh, <laughs> we haven't played any of it. We Harbinger. Of it. <laughs> we played We played Harbinger. Uh, I think we played Tidal and Harbinger on the same fucking tour. Yeah. I mean, I think you would have to, right? Yeah. On the tour that, like, sort of was supporting this record. Yeah. You kind of can't go out on tour supporting a record and only not play any of songs off it, can you? Yeah, we did it uh, on that fucking um, August Burns Red tour that we did. We played both those songs. So. It's weird. Um, when are you guys going to play Caravan Live on nine, oh, fuck, nine dude. and a half minutes? I was thinking about that today. Make an excellent closing song. Be a fucking headache. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like long songs. I never have. Um, uh, I, just, I don't know. I like that song. I think that's one of the best songs in our fucking catalog, to be honest. It's a great uh, song. Well, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like this, we sort of did a thing with Pacific Myth where we were just like, "Hey, what do you guys want to hear?" And people were like, "Long song. I want to hear a long song." So, Truk and Scoot and Mike were like, "Okay," <laughs> <laughs> and they wrote a long song. And I remember just going through it like piece by piece and being like, "Fuck! So much work. I only have a month." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at yeah. least it's not like a thirty-minute song like Heart Sounds did. I love heart sounds. Fuck that, man. I love that. I love that song. Yeah. 
I love I I like some longer songs. Yeah. I don't what I don't really like is long progressive metal songs. Isn't I that know like that, the whole that's like sort of the calling card of the genre of progressive music. Like progressive songs are supposed to be like yeah. 14 minutes long with 27,000 parts and But yo, you can make a song super long if you just like drag shit out. Mhm. And, like, I feel like that happens a lot, where it's, like, shit is just, like, dragged out. Whereas, like, an 18-minute song, like, the fucking Decline, yeah, where they're just going, like, here's this cool-ass part, everything's fast, is going to sing this, like, catchy little melody, he's going to say something a little biting, and then we're going to move on to the next part that's going to be uh, another cool-ass part, <laughs> you know? And it just, like, moves and moves and moves. And maybe I'm just fucking painting with broad strokes, but uh, the reality is I've kind of bored by prog- progressive music because I don't care that much about flashy guitars. Yeah. That that that's really what it is is that It's cuz like, you're spoiled. Yeah, wow. Well, You've been spoiled by the flashiest of guitars <laughs> for so long. <laughs> yeah, but I just like flashy I'm guitars bored by no that. longer impress you. I want to hear like either I just want to hear you fucking strumming the chords fast and hard mm-hmm. or I just want to hear like a rock riff that makes me want to bang my head like I don't give a flying fuck about like techie ass shit that I can't follow <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I'm a singer it's that there's a reason why I'm a fucking singer because I, I want to hear her singing and I don't find a lot of interest that's why in I love recommending instrumental only stuff to you all the time i'm like check this out and you're like how's the singing i'm so awesome yeah and there's yeah. none and i, I like some that. instrumental stuff um the plenty intervals mm-hmm. you know uh oh, you know what it's a weird one that's gonna actually i'm saying a lot of stuff that'll probably piss off progressive metal fans uh i don't really like dream theater but i really like liquid tension experiment mm which is dream theater without the singer. Right. And it, it's not even necessarily about the singer's voice. He's got a good voice. It's yeah. just the liquid attention's like fucking faster or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. I have no good justification for anything. I don't like progressive metal vocalists, despite the fact that they're all very talented. The melodies don't, stick with me for some reason if like the long drawn out holding notes forever it doesn't stick with me it doesn't strike me as catchy you like catchiness i like catchiness and i like i i feel like we should all be striving to write uh pop melodies within our respective songs you know not like an actual i'm not saying write a pop song i'm saying something write something that i can fucking sing back to you motherfucker yeah (laughs) yeah and i'm guilty of it too you know, like, I'm, I'm just bad as anyone else, but I'm trying my fucking hardest. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I've gone back through a bunch of interviews and re- or reviews of Pacific Myth. Yeah, I don't think it went over super well when it came out. Um, it seems like a lot of the people reviewing the record continue, like continued to miss the point Mm. um i see a lot of them that are like um i really love lyrically the first five songs and then the the last song like uh it just doesn't fit with the rest of the record and it's like well wait that there's a reason for that does it bug you at all that people are like (laughs) uh not really uh that brings me fucking joy (laughs) <laughs> makes <laughs> you like when someone me at all it brings me joy yeah when, when people are like like clearly miss the point of it yeah that's funny to me right yeah. um and that's okay you know like the whole thing was kind of like a middle finger to fucking concept records which we yeah. write all the time yeah um uh but <sighs> i don't know like I I had received a lot of criticism for our record before that about uh, my lyrics and how I was writing in a way that was not conducive to progressive metal. So I was like, I can fucking write that stupid shit. 
<laughs> All right? Fucking flowery language, fucking meaningless drivel. And I was mad. <laughs> so I wrote uh, five songs that were like... I yeah. mean, like, it's it's not like I didn't care about writing it. It's not like I just fucking, like, farted out this... Uh, poetry right I, I i took time and i crafted it and it was like i i can write this i'm capable of writing this but like you want something that is devoid of meaning to me yeah, yeah. and so i found the meaning um within it and the meaning was hey fuck you <laughs> <laughs> i i really like that well because thank you because i mean uh, if it doesn't mean anything to you, where's the passion, mm -hmm. right? If it doesn't mean anything to you, if you're just doing it because, like, that's what you're supposed to do, yeah. then wh what's the point of doing it? Like, there's 50 other people that do that. I, You know, I get, I get all the time, like, I hear people be like, I don't really listen to the lyrics, you know? And it's like, in that scenario, I get it, and mm -hmm. that's totally fucking fair. You know, guitarists and bassists and drummers and keyboardists and all shit. Like, I, 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 the vocals are kind of just passing unless they stick out in a weird way, which is totally cool. But, like, lyrics mean everything to me in a song. And if you're fucking, like, phoning it in and, like, telling this, like, bullshit story just for the sake of telling a story, yeah. to me, that's, like, what what is the reason going like, I guess you can always write it off by being like, I need to just be creative, but it's like, why? Right. What, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what is you know, the... like it sticks out to me. It's like, why wouldn't you want to have a moral? Why wouldn't you want to have some kind of moral to this fucking story you're telling beyond just being like, Wah, it's a concept record. Holy. <laughs> You know? Dragons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, We're going to use a bunch of fucking words like obsidian. Like, I, <laughs> I, there's very intentional word use within this to, like, yeah. fucking denote, like, other specific things yeah. that have been meaningless, in my opinion, which yeah. doesn't mean they're actually meaningless. Um, does... Uh, I... I saw some interviews with you guys where it was like, yeah, this was cool. Never again. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was an experiment. It was hard, right? Yeah. It was a song a month. Yeah. It's hard. Especially when they're fucking super intricate, right? Like yeah. my job was probably the easiest of anyone's. Yeah. Um, and it was fucking hard for me. <laughs> I think Definitely I saw, thought I was gonna miss the deadline a couple times. I think I saw something Tim Tim was saying, uh, like Cam, you know, was doing all the all the stuff we were doing, and then we'd be like, "All right, our parts are done. See ya." And then Cam would just like have to do like another full day's work, yeah, by himself, like doing recording all the production the, work and everything. Recording the bass, recording the production, yeah. recording the vocals. Now, Melen did, Melen did production, and uh, it was all mixed by uh, Anthony. Yeah. Sexy, sexy Anthony, who... Um, he tracked the vocals for Palimpsest. He uh, did a bunch of extra shit on Volition. We, we've worked with him in one capacity or another all the time. He's sexy Anthony. He's the greatest. Um, and he, he gets a lot of flack for Pacific Myth that it's not his fucking fault because he mixed it and people are like, yo, the fucking monthly releases were mixed really well and they sounded great, but when the fucking shit came out... Like the full album? The, the full album thing came out, uh, it's not... It's, it's, it's fucked. <laughs> and I don't know if it's fucked. I don't, like, I don't have the kind of ear for that. Um... I've probably said this before, but Luke told me that he and Michael went back in and like nitpicked it. Um, like just sat there and Anthony just sort of like went, whatever, man, it's your record. You can have whatever you want. <laughs> and they just like nitpicked it and nitpicked it until the point where it like, it got, it became what it was. And yeah. they sort of, 
they fucked it. And there was no <laughs> going back. Yeah, so there is some like I, I there's a fella fortunately on YouTube that has like put those original mixes up. I think they might be on Bandcamp still. I I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, but I know the original mixes. There's definitely a guy that's got them on fucking YouTube. But it's very interesting. I was looking at the numbers today between Cold Water, the one on our official YouTube, and the one on his official YouTube, and the difference is. <laughs> dark right like he has so many fucking listens and i i am genuinely grateful that that guy has those up otherwise they'd be like lost to time and i don't i don't i would like to say that i'm not like be like fuck mike and luke for doing that no not at all uh, and i mean i may be throwing them under the bus by saying that they did it <laughs> but they they did it and i'm sure there's tons of people wondering like what happened and that's it there's um there is like a principle in mixing like i i've spent a lot of time just like watching mixing videos on youtube and reading as much as i can about mixing because mm -hmm. like as an amateur musician who basically writes records mixes does every all the stuff yeah. with my own music like trying to get it to a level where it sounds like a, a, a good professional production. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to learn as much as I can about the process really with no background in it. Yep. And um, there's a, there's a principle and it's like after a certain amount of time, no matter what you just stop because yeah. anything you do after that is just, you you've heard it too many times and your frame of reference to what, like where you started to where you are is gone. Yeah. And yeah. Cam's really uh, good about stuff like that. Like, uh, it's true what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but Cam will, like, he'll be listening to mixes and, like, doing stuff. And then all of a sudden, he'll just take the headphones off and be like, I need to fucking, like, rest my ears because yeah. it's just, like, all start, start, sort of starting to sound yep. like fucking nothing. And that's. I have no fucking idea about any of that stuff. I've dabbled a little bit here and there in some of that stuff, but I, I don't know. We like with, uh, with every other release, we've been pretty hands off because we're, for the most part, we are like that. Like, unless something is blatantly kind of fucked, mm -hmm. like we would only put, uh, our opinion in the matter. If we'd be like, Hey, could you just like bring the keyboards down here? Just a douche. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's what it would be like, you know? So yeah. For the most part, like you just like trust the engineer, like you hired them for a reason. And yeah. um, I'm a big fan of hiring professionals to do a job and trusting them to do that job because, yeah. and I think I'm that was a lesson. Expert. I think that was a lesson for us. Um, a lesson that we had to like learn. <laughs> over again because like we knew we knew it initially it's just like that yeah. guy knows more than us let him do it yeah. you know and that was like our fucking baseline for the whole time but then it's like you know been a long time we thought we knew some shit we went in and found out that we didn't and uh yeah the well, lesson is hey just adjust levels to this that and the other thing if you're not happy with it leave everything else the fuck alone or hire someone different if you're really not happy with it yeah. <laughs> But, but I also think it's like I was happy. How do you? I was happy with it, Brittany. <laughs> how do you learn, though? Right? Uh, how do you learn? By fucking up a yeah important release. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not that fucked, by the way. I don't know. It's I not. just read comments and they break my heart. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they I don't think break the my heart. Sounds great. So, but it but it doesn't sound as good as the original recording. Well, from what I think that I understand I think that's like just your opinion man we should just get it remixed you can understand why that's not a fucking thing you do that it with is. like everything i'm sure the stems are all there they have to be um do you want to play i might a game? even have them here yeah you do yeah this is where this episode gets fucked i love it okay so this uh, this song cold water mm-hmm uh what um I have a, I have four questions, four trivia type questions for you. Are you just going to ask me about four different teeth in your mouth that nope. have sensitivity to water temperatures? Nope. No, that would be real weird. Just going That'd incisor. Be... <laughs> <laughs> uh, when 
the temperature drops around your body. Yeah. Drops below 60 degrees. How much penile length can you expect to lose? Well, if I'm going personally, and what uh, what system of measurement would you like me it's to abide by? Percentages. Oh, thirty. So your options for the correct oh. answer are mm-hmm. a ten percent. This is okay. this is scientific data. Is it ten percent, twenty percent, fifty percent, or one hundred percent? Your penis just goes away. Mm-hmm. Um. Probably, it's got to be 10 to 20%. 20%, I'll say. It's up to 50%. You know what? It's 20 to 30% (sighs) in girthness, up to 50% in lengthness. It gets thinner? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I got thinner when I was cold. (laughs) It's funny, because like I am cold right now, and my friggin' dink is like... Uh, nothing i should have known i should have known I'm like should have just like thought about how Fuck. my dink feels right now i'm been like that's at least half as big as it is I've, usual i've been real cold my entire life <laughs> <laughs> um so the mechanism that causes Whoa. penile shrinkage sure in the cold is due to what a cavemen slept on the ground and the body is avoiding penile tip frostbite. Okay. B, the body is prioritizing blood to the vital organs and reduces blood flow to your ding dong. That's it. C, it shrinks to move out of the way to make room for the testicles to move closer to the body to stay warm. That's, if you made that up, that's clever. Or D, to humiliate you like George Costanza. Uh, so it's B. Yes, it's got to be. It's 100% yeah. B. Uh, just makes so much fucking sense. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we don't got time for this, Dick. We need the heart. <laughs> 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 we need to fucking make sure the fingers don't freeze off. Yeah. Pump some blood to them, baby. Yeah, that's uh, funny as hell. The term shrinkage. To mean the smallening of the Johnson in the cold mm-hmm. yes. is to use some the technical actual terms. medical term, A, is the actual medical term, B, coined by Peter Melman, the writer of the Seinfeld episode, C, it was used in Shakespeare as a pun related to pinky fingers, or D, a mispronunciation of the term shrimpage, which is the actual medical term. Oh, so I was like pretty confident in my answer until you said the last one with shrimpage. Um, I I think within popular vernacular, uh, it's got to be the Seinfeld episode. Like whether it officially did it or not. See, were you gonna say yeah? Yeah, it, it is. is. It's yeah. the the yeah. guy who wrote the Seinfeld episode. Yeah, and Larry David specifically told him yes. Uh, yes, and also use that word shrinkage a lot yeah. in the episode. As it, like it's funny to think of uh, the world before that mm-hmm. where we didn't like know that terminology. Yeah, but like yeah, of course. Yeah, it happened, but like nobody called it that. And maybe people had yeah. called it that before, but it was just like a funny way to be like, hey, like well, yeah. when people call their underwear their gotchies or something like yeah. that, you know, like. People have said it, but like yeah. it never been fucking like publicly addressed like yeah. that. Final question. You got it. The most dangerous result of shrinkage is A, it can become permanent. B, when shrunken, the friction on the tip by clothes can be painful. C, it can shrink so much that it does a reverse turtleneck into your body. Or D, the scalding that occurs when you inevitably pour a kettle of hot water on it to get it back to normal size. None of these sound that bad. I mean, like maybe staying that way permanently, which I don't, I don't know if that's real. 
but like turning itself inside out, like whatever, it'll come back out. I think. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know that it would actually go up inside you like that. Uh, but I could see like damaging the um the the flow of blood if it was too shrunked up, like if it was like freezing. Mm-hmm. And permanently damaging the nerve endings and stuff like that. So maybe it wouldn't come back. I'm going to say, yeah, it's forever. You think it's become permanent? Yeah. It's it's B. When shrunken, the friction on the tip in clothes, apparently it's a thing that when it shrinks up and then it goes like this. And they say, yeah. if you are going to be in those situations, you should wear special underpants. Like what? Like boxer briefs or whatever to keep everything snugged up. Everybody wears boxer briefs all the time, Fritzy. Move. You don't want there to be any movement of it. Does anybody against. not wear boxer briefs? I don't wear... Oh, I guess I do. Yeah, you do. See? Sometimes you probably wear boxer shorts. Do you no. do that? Mm-mm. No. That would be fucking... <sighs> I would honestly have you institutionalized... From... If I found out you were wearing big fucking sloppy Joe boxers. <laughs> that was? Boxer shorts were like a thing all the way, like. Oh, they were for me too. I didn't switch to boxer briefs until like college. So I was like in yeah. my 20s. Yeah, but so was the earth. Yeah. It was like the yeah. 1920s. Everybody was just wearing bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I wore I wore boxer shorts mm-hmm. in fucking like elementary school, yeah. so maybe around the same time. Yeah. But like that was also a time where it was cool to wear your pants like lower, super low, and you got to show off your boxer. So shorts. you fucking like boxer shorts a bunch up and like hang out of them. Oh yeah, and there's nothing worse than your pants getting too low and then trying to pull your pants up and they catching on and the they bottom your... of the boxer oh, shorts. Oh yeah, and yeah, pull yeah, your boxer yeah. Boxer shorts up in way your ass up, and... yeah. Fuck, you're describing a sensation I haven't experienced in a long I time. Know, it's really it's really terrifying. I'd die to have it again. <laughs> uh, does it, honestly, I want to fucking see in the comments if anyone or anyone you know wears boxer shorts. Like, I don't care if you're wearing fucking tidy whities Like, that's fine. Like, that's uh, underwear that I would say is acceptable. Like, who the fuck on this planet Earth is wearing boxer shorts. I feel like also, though, if you're a tidy whities guy, um, yeah. just buy ones that are a different color than white. Just don't go... It looks too yeah. much like yeah. a diaper. We're black. Yeah, black. Or, or brown. Or stripies or whatever. Like, do something. Fucking Dude, underoos. I'm... Who cares? <laughs> something. But just... I'm warped to her one year. Uh, I left my bag in the van. And our manager drove off with my suitcase. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have, like, I called him. I was like, yo, my bag is in the bag. He's like, already on the road, bro. Peace. So I didn't have (laughs) clothes for two months. Wait a minute. For two months? Yeah. So I had to either, like, make friends with bands that gave me merch, wear our merch, or there would be, like, midnight Walmart stops where I could, like, stock up on, like, fucking underwear and uh, T-shirts and whatever. But, um, but you, I start... You weren't worried because you had one good pair of pants. Yeah, I had a pair of Umbro shorts. I was wearing purple fucking Umbro shorts when he pulled off. Um, <laughs> I wasn't even wearing un- underpants. <gasps> we were selling booty shorts. I was wearing booty nice. shorts all fucking summer. Um, (laughs) but, um, yeah, so I started wearing these underwear that I bought at Walmart, which were men's thongs. Ooh. And like, it sounds different than it is, uh, because it makes it sound like it goes right up my butt. And that's what I thought it was when I bought it, because I was like, that's fucking hilarious. I'll have (laughs) like four pairs of of underwear. Yeah. But they had a full bum and a full dink, but then it just went up to the waistband and there was like no sidewall. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it was the weirdest underwear. Yeah. And so, like, in the middle of the day, I could, like, grab my fucking uh, waistband and just kind of, like, pull it up. <laughs> it was just, like, this, like, two strings that came yeah. up. 
Uh, and I spent my whole summer doing that. I went back and bought multiple packs. I was so happy with them. Yeah, I'm sure. But then I never wore them. They were again. very sexy. It was a weird thing to do. Like, if you see pictures of me from fucking summer 2006, I think, make sure you check my waistband for <laughs> just like a just loose go fucking. And just look for yeah. it. <laughs> we're weird shit, man. Tim, I'm sure Tim has tons of those photos. Yeah, he maybe. He has a ton of pictures. Oh, dude. Henry went to his house the other day and stayed at his house, and he found this old picture of us. I might have sent it to you. It's fucking funny. Um, but uh, we're just walking down the street somewhere. It's very clearly summertime, and I'm wearing a winter's cloak, which is like the weirdest fucking thing I possibly could be wearing. There it is. Like, I'm wearing jean shorts that are, like, just like the ones I'm wearing now. Except for these why, ones I'm yeah, writing why are you wearing up. a cloak? I don't know. I found a cloak at a value village, and I was like, give me that fucking cloak. And also, you may notice I don't have any eyebrows in this picture. Yeah, why not? Who cut them off of you while you were asleep? Uh, Nobody. Uh, I was at a party in Quebec. I feel like I told this story, uh, maybe on the Tim episode, but we were partying with these older dudes and they're like, when you get drunk, we're going to shave your eyebrows. And I was like, fuck you. I'm going to shave them right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just fucking, I was like, whatever, do it. I don't care. And I let them shave them off. Going, oh, you guys are badasses. You don't really realize until the next day that your eyebrows are like super important right. the way your face looks. You look like a fucking alien without them. <laughs> you didn't think to just draw some fake ones on? I did every day. Like every Leo. day I would let Arif draw my eyebrows on and uh, whatever emotion he picked, I stayed in that emotion <laughs> all day. <laughs> <laughs> so like one day he drew like one up here like there was just like all the time just being like what do you mean by that what are you talking about <laughs> huh <laughs> it's in my like grade 12 graduation picture because of that fucking Quebec trip I do not have eyebrows so if you go back to my fucking yearbook? school do you have Anderson yearbook? I don't I never bought a yearbook I don't care about uh, uh, other people <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, you didn't want so, to have as many people as possible wish you a really like hope you have a great summer I'm, we left I'm, I, I I'm never cool like it's cool that we were once like real good friends in sixth grade have a great summer last uh last exam that i took the van was waiting for me out front and i went on tour that's so we didn't, i didn't even fucking see anyone what a fucking so, life peace what a fucking life pretty cool huh yeah <laughs> like the but, like the coolest i think <laughs> right like that's every yeah, kid's maybe. dream so kids yeah. if you're listening to this keep your dreams yeah it's possible stick to beers though yeah you know like just if you're gonna dabble in drugs dabble and just stick your big toe in and get out yep don't fucking spend too long in them yeah drugs are bad okay yeah some of them can be fun yeah but just to just the water's not cold, baby, dip in your big toe. Maybe I'll see you at Fragante Delicto. <laughs> um, do you have anything else to say about cold water? No. Mm. Do you? Uh, you know any other insider stuff about it? Do you remember, like, where you tracked the vocals? Yeah, it in um, Etobicoke. Tobacco. You ever heard of a Tobacco? I have. It's not spelled yeah. that way. No, it looks like a Toby Coke. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, near Toronto. Yes. I tracked it in uh, Tony's Tony's basement. Sexy Tony's basement. You didn't have to go to like a like an actual studio studio to do it. It was a nice basement studio, yeah. but yeah, no. We just tracked it all at Tony's. I think they did guitars there too. Oh, that's really great. Uh, yeah, I mean, like he had his whole fucking basement done. It, like he hired a bunch of dudes to come in and fucking put a booth in and do all sorts of sound shit. He, he's incredible, that Tony. Sexy, sexy Tony. I like it. 
Yeah, I don't have anything do you, else about do it. Do you remember? Do you remember writing the lyrics? Mm, yeah, I wrote it and recorded it in our spare bedroom where I used to at our old house mm. where I used to do that. And I remember like from like right at the top, like uh, for Pacific Myth, I wrote like a huge block, like right down. It was probably by the time I stopped writing the very first time I got three songs done. Wow. Four songs. Which is why which is why the lyrics at the end of the song Death is callous, strange and sudden are the beginning of the next song. Right. Right? Because it's like I just had to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> and it just like worked, but then I was like, oh, I'm kind of fucking encroaching on like the next few steps of the hero's journey and I gotta kinda like uh, uh, <laughs> but, it's, but it's pretty cool though that like there are those things right like that mesh mm. things together like the little pieces that mesh things together i think there's a tim mentioned uh in caravan there's like uh a riff from every every other album up to that point yeah there's four separate riffs um which is cool as hell like when did tim mention that in an interview I read. Oh, yeah. You called them Easter it's, eggs. Yeah. Well, the thing about Easter eggs is uh, if you talk about them, they're not Easter yeah. eggs. <laughs> Good job, Timmy. Um, it, it, did he, you know what they are? Uh, he, I'm not off the top of my head, but yeah. I, think so. I do. You do? What are they? It's uh, Bury the Hatchet, Say La Vie, uh, Drumhead Trial. Yeah. And maybe dissensions. I feel like it's got to be dissensions. Nope, that's not dissensions. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? I that's how dissensions go. I can't tell what you just said. It was just you just I said, said uh, D a bunch of times. Like I don't know which songs all in D. What sound do you make for uh, Woodley guitars? Weedly, weedly, weedly. Oh, you make weedly? And sneedly. I'm a diddly guy. And diddly uh, diddly diddly wow, diddly. Wow. Sprout wow. Spreedy did did do. Biddly. You kind of go, you go to the school of the Jack Black school? Yeah, a little bit. Really How do you do bass then? What if what if all PTH bass lines were just that? That was uh I'm pretty sure that was Halen bass line. That was the bass line to a fucking Dolly Parton's working nine to five. <laughs> boom, 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 uh, I had a thing in my head and then I lost it. Uh, I know what Easter thing eggs. it was about the Easter eggs. Oh, is there some Easter eggs in here? I don't know. What hopped in the head? Can you put an mm-hmm. Easter egg in this episode? Yes. Did you do it already? No. When are you gonna do it? Now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sweet. There's a vinyl release coming. I'm not at liberty to say what it is, <laughs> um, but I will have a copy of it by the time we talk about it. Uh, the um, hang on, that's is that an Easter egg? Yes, but I also somebody it's posted a, little too obvious. a YouTube video. I have to find it real fast in my yeah. Discord. It is. Hop out of bed and I screw it to the kitchen. I don't know the words to that, but somebody I has do love search for the truth on YouTube. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be on YouTube? I don't know. 
I had never. I think that's where. That's like the only place it is. Yeah. The one that I'd be scared of is if uh, our shit from Kids on Drugs was on YouTube. Are like eh, not very first recordings, but close. Was it like? Is that Happy Go Lucky era? Yeah. Song called "Watch It Die" Uh or "Let It Die," and another song that went. uh, I forget what that one's called. Uh, I'm pretty sure it goes Blink One Eighty Two. Without diversity in our society. <laughs> those are the real words. I like that you remember those words from. I think I remember the whole fucking half your song. life ago. Yeah. I mean, what were you? 15, 14, 15? Less. Yeah. I think. <laughs> um, we recorded that. We were still in like fucking eighth grade. We were like 12. No, we may be older than that, but it, not much. <laughs> Was it one of those deals like. Uh... You could come into the studio, you pay for the studio time, and like you, you get like one day, and you come out with like a a CD. Yeah, kinda. We were hanging out with this band called Mr. Machete, who were awesome um, from Oshawa back in the day, and they were like, "Yo, we're starting a label. It's called Kids on Drugs. It's Mr. Machete, the used guys, and One Short, which is like another band from around the area." And they're like, we're putting out a fucking compilation. And we all went in and recorded our songs, paid for our time, and then put it all on a fucking disc. Uh, and it's not the sickest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I want to find it. Yeah. I mean, I wish I wasn't talking about it so that people wouldn't fucking search for it because if, if they ever find it, it's not cool. <laughs> I doubt it's on YouTube. Some of, it might be. Some of that stuff, I though, know. I mean, like, YouTube wasn't that big back then, was it? Yeah, at that point? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's hard to say. I think I could find a copy of it, because fucking Chris is talking to me about it. What's this? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a copy of the first thing that I did in would have been, like, freshman year of high school. This is us. This is those hats. I'm just gonna put it on until my voice comes in. <laughs> You see. Dude, that's fucking sick. It's just like fucking uh, Fat Records kind of yeah. shit. <laughs> but isn't that like how every band starts? It's supposed to be. Yeah, every band starts out like playing a bunch of punk rock songs and trying yeah, to be singing about propaganda and no effects. And... Yeah, yeah. Right? Particularly propaganda. Propagandy. Yeah. Pro- I don't know. Propaganda. There's nothing to be embarrassed about of that. No, I thought it was going to be way worse. It's actually pretty <laughs> <freaking> good. <laughs> well, there's your Easter egg. Yeah, I was going to say, is that an Easter egg? That is, because now now the in kids who are listening to this podcast will know that and, yeah. and have heard it, and the kids that don't listen, no idea. And hopefully there's no way for them to find the rest of it. Yeah, probably. Because if they did, what would you tell them? I don't know. Enjoy. You would? I'd tell them, eat shit and go fuck yourself. I'm old cheesy. And I'm old fritzy. And you've been listening. And you can. What? Listen to more of this podcast <laughs> anytime you want. And follow us on Instagram. That'd be sick. <laughs> At Podcast the Hero. Like. <laughs> <laughs>